biggest South Sudanese comedian in Africa. Give it up for AK Don. Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. What's up? What's up? You guys are all here. Who's home? <laughs> You're all here. Yeah. Ladies, what's up? What's up? What's up? Can we talk about the smile now or later? Later, eh? You guys are good. Uh, my, 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 my name is AK Dance, and I'm the biggest stand-up comedian from South Sudan. You don't need to clap, I'm used. But uh, there's actually no food in South Sudan. People are struggling with hunger, so the rest of the comedians are small, making me the biggest. <laughs> But you see, I like how Africa has branded itself. When you look at every country in Africa, there's a way we brand ourselves. All right? When you look at a country, you, t you say, I'm from this country, they will recognize you by what you have in your country. Like if you say, I'm from Rwanda, be like, wow, hey, clean city. Gorillas, that's what we recognize Rwanda from. <laughs> eh? When you say uh, Kenya, someone will be like, wow, Maasai culture. Do you know them? Everyone thinks that you're all Maasai. I don't know why. <laughs> that's how they recognize Kenya. You speak about Uganda, like, wow, Museveni. <laughs> is he still there? <laughs> Now, I noticed that my country is so weird because what we are recognized of is funny actually when i meet someone I'm like hey hello how are you i'm from south sudan they're like oh whoa i'm like why focus on the world we have better things we have gorillas we have focus on the guys holding the guns they are black that is a good modeling prop do you know how much money a black person can make in america focus on beautiful things all right but you see i like how embassies work embassies sir do you know what an embassy is Uh, if you don't know what an, uh, an embassy is, an embassy is an uh, American embassy. <laughs> That's an embassy. <laughs> Now, one, one, of the, one of the key essentials of embassies in different countries is to offer visas and also protect its citizens in that particular country. For example, right now in Uganda, there's an embassy of Kenya in Uganda. In case there is war in, in, in Uganda, uh, the citizens of uh, Kenya can run to the embassy and they are helped out. Now, my country, South Sudan, is so insecure to an extent that we have an embassy of South Sudan <laughs> in South Sudan itself. <laughs> so when we fight, we run to our own embassy for help. You can imagine, it's like being slapped by your mother and you run back to your mother for help. Very fun. Speaking of, about my mother, my, my mother, I love that woman one of the best women on this earth. You know, I was born, I was born in, a, in a refugee camp. Kakuma. You guys know Kakuma? Yeah. In, in the Turkana region. Turkana. You guys know that. You know, one thing about being, when you're born a refugee, it's like when you're born HIV positive. It's not your fault, but you have to take the medication. <laughs> if you want to survive. But let me tell you, you guys, if you're a mother in the building, a round of applause for yourself. You guys are amazing. African mothers. African mothers are the thing. I respect mothers so much. I lost my mother very many years ago, and I wish I could return things. They are the best. You know, African mothers don't tolerate nonsense. And that's why we are who we are. If you look at white parents, there's a way they hold hand on their kids. They tolerate nonsense. I was watching a movie, and then this kid tells the mom, Mom, I think I'm gay. Then the mom is like, Oh, my son. Oh my God, it's okay, we shall go through this together. Together? <laughs> What African mother says that nonsense? I remember one time my brother, my brother also got stuff in his head, goes to our mom, is like, Mom, I think I'm gay. He received a hot slap. And you know, African mothers slap you, leave you to sort yourself out, and they go and do the other things. Then they come back when you've already processed the slap. So she comes back, and it's like, Now what do you think? My brother is like, I think I'm a guy. <laughs> My mom is like, 
just as I thought. Now go and wash the water. They always give you what to do after beating you. <laughs> Very funny. But you see, uh, uh, but my mom was so economical, she would account for everything. Everything you do, she asks you, who will pay for it? Finds you reading books at night. She's like, when are you doing exams? Two months from now. And you're wasting my electricity. Read during the day, who will pay for this electricity? <laughs> Finds you bathing. It's like, you bathed yesterday, you're bathing again. Are you competing? Who's going to pay for this water? So one time we were in church. In church, and then she tells her stories to the, to the pastor. You know, pastor, I'm badly off with these kids. These kids are hard. It's, it's a struggle. Please pray for me. Then the pastor's like, okay, fine. Kneel down, I pray for you. Pastor starts praying for my mom. Like, woman, today, you're in the house of God. God is going to bless you. God is going to protect you. In fact, God is coming to your house. My mom was like, pastor, wait. <laughs> Who will pay for his transport? <laughs> And how many of them are coming? Is he coming with Gabriel? <laughs> that guy impregnates people. I don't want another child. <laughs> you don't just come to people's house. Like, the pastor's like, woman, this is the word of God. Like, and how much is the word of God? <laughs> Nairobi, Kenya, this has been my time. Thank you so much. Blessings, blessings, and blessings.